How much does your face say about you? Because it's about to launch a thousand new applications. Already some digital screens in Australia use facial recognition to show ads based on age and gender. The systems don't store personally identifying data, but beyond that, companies are refusing to comment. It's clearly a sensitive topic. It's a very new industry. There are a lot of issues both technology issues but also issues to do with community acceptance and privacy that still need to be sorted out. Some of those issues are still very new, so issues to do with legislation and what people need to tell other people and transparency. Best practice is that people should be notified if their biometrics are being collected and if their biometrics are being matched. But there's so much more in the pipeline than just ads. The system is now searching for faces. Searching, searching. There, it's recognised me. OK, what happens when I walk in, though? The system's never come across me before, as far as I know. Entrepreneur Professor Brian Lovell has been developing cutting-edge facial recognition software for US and Australian security services. Uh, this is what's called a, a non-cooperative system, meaning that it will get your identity without you necessarily knowing about it. Now he wants to take it to the mass consumer market. He'll be loading his software into the latest augmented reality glasses from US company ODG. It will match who you see against a database of images and information. So this whole system can be put onto a mobile or wearable device. So here I have some augmented reality glasses and uh, we have face recognition uh, on these. So the same system on a set of glasses. Built into it. Yes, and uh, if I stick these on, uh, this gives you a full 3D heads up display uh, of the world and you can use this to recognise uh, faces. It puts a little box around your face and says this is the, the person I'm looking at and some other information perhaps like this person is late for a flight or this person wants to order a cappuccino. You can have you know, thousands of faces in it. And what databases could it draw on? A any, any face databases. Like uh, police databases, shopping databases, anything? Yes, passenger lists, um, these sorts of things, you know, customer lists. Okay, that is amazing. But Google Glass banned facial recognition after a public backlash. Brian Lovell says privacy guidelines will be observed, but you can tell he thinks we're all being a little oversensitive. If you're in a small town, uh, you know, like a small village, everybody recognises everyone else and everyone seems to get on quite well. And, you know, when a stranger comes into town, uh, they can't sort of rob all the houses because everybody notices them. So. Um, that's, that's not such a bad society and we've lost that as we've moved to the big cities. The question is, you know, does this bring back something more like the little village? So this app uh, allows you to choose your fingerprint or your face. All you your face could also replace the frustrating tangle of potentially hackable passwords that you never remember. You tap it and the transaction has been okayed and you're done. Each employee is spending three weeks of their working life authenticating two systems. Uh, and I'm just thinking, how can we reduce that three weeks of login time and, and pa lost passwords and so on down to, let's say, one week? Who knew selfies would become so vital? Even activating cars. But as fast as the technology develops, others are trying to get around it. The mask technology uses synthetic material to create something which is very lifelike and uh, it really is almost mission impossible. <laughs> you can go online and you can order these masks very freely. 
picking him up in the, uh, the optical as having a face. Ted Dunstone's company, Biometics, specialises in detecting how some people try to fake out facial recognition, like the mask. But in the thermal image, he's looking a lot darker, and in particular around the eye regions, you'll notice that the eyes are really glowing uh, at a much higher rate than the, the rest of the face, which is a giveaway that there's a mask. There was a case in 2010 with a uh, Hong Kong national trying to get into um, Canada uh, wearing, wearing a mask on a flight. Um, and he was only detected because uh, he was wearing a mask which didn't match his hands. His hands looked young and his face looked old. And just when you thought it was safe to take that selfie to authenticate your purchase... All right, so, now... so if we're using a selfie on my face to open a computer or a security system, we can just... I look in... Yep. <laughs> I'm now Sean Connery. Um, and it stays there even when I move, when I talk. You can move your face, you can, you can talk. Hello, and hello, hello. This is using commonly available browser-based technology. Would this pass muster for a, a selfie, security selfie, or, or to open? Look, I, I think it's fair to, in, in short, yes. In most instances, it probably would. So get ready. Facial recognition is coming to a device near you. The question is who will oversee its rollout and what safeguards are needed.